Welcome. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to graph vector valued functions. So we're given the vector valued function r of t is equal to t comma 1. So this is a vector valued function in two dimensions and the first thing I'm going to do is draw my x and y coordinate axes. All right, so there I have an x and y coordinate axes. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a table. And in this table, I'm going to have a column for t, or I can make this rows, and a column for um, our vector value function r of t. And again, you can make these rows, you know, t, r of t, whatever fits best on your page. So I'm going to start with t equals negative 2. When t equals negative 2, our vector value function is negative 2 comma 1. And I could have chosen to start anywhere. I just chose to start, you know, somewhere off over here. All right, so what about when t equals negative 1? We end up with negative 1, 1. And hopefully you're seeing um, what's going on. The only value that's changing, that is, the only value that's changing is the x-coordinate. So if for 0, we'll have 0, 1. And we can go further out, say, for positive 4, we'll have the point 4, 1. So the x-coordinate varies, but the y-coordinate stays fixed. This should sound familiar to you. This is uh, how horizontal lines are described. Okay, so there is the graph of our vector valued function. And to just make it very, very clear, let me label some of the t's. What I mean is when t equals negative 2, our vector is negative 2, 1. So that's the vector negative 2, comma, 1. And it's pointing in that direction. And this point here, that is the value of our vector value function, the ordered pair negative 2, 1. Let's take a look at one more. Say when t equals 4, we have this ordered pair here of 4, 1. And the vector itself is 4, positive 1. So vector valued functions are graphed by drawing all the vectors that make them up. So in this case, they'd look like this. And then we connect all the dots of the tips of these vectors to create the graph of the vector valued function itself. Finally, before I close out, I'm hoping that by seeing these values on the table here, you can see that our curve is moving in this direction. You know, we have one vector here, and as t changes, our vector tips move from left to right, so I'm going to indicate that by adding arrows directly on my line to show the direction of movement. I hope you found this video helpful.